How y'all doing tonight? I just finished with this grave and was just giving my bones a rest. I like working at night. It's nice and peaceful. The name is M.T. Graves. I'm the caretaker and digger here at the graveyard. So did you stop by to hear a yarn or two? I have some terror-filled tales that will set your mind racing and have your hair on end. Well, find you a spot and get comfortable and I'll tell you a story that will keep you up at night, staring into the darkness wondering if you will be next. The summer of 1989 is when it happened. A young fresh out of college girl lived in a small town just south of where she went to school, called Tiger Mountain. Many of the people in this town had lived there most of their lives, except for the occasional college student. She lived in a small ranch-style house with three different rental units. They all had a door exited to a tree-lined boulevard with large lots, most of the homes set back at angles from the street. At age 22, she had known every neighbor on her block for a few years. It was a typical summer. Hot and humid, with frequent nighttime thunderstorms. What made this summer unique, and uniquely terrifying, was the presence of a nefarious serial killer. Details about the murders were sketchy, and much of what people knew was likely random speculation. Still, the local press was pretty dogged and everyone knew the police had confirmed eight murders since the beginning of the year. Most figured there were more, many more. The news said it was a male, anywhere from 5 foot 5, to 6 foot tall according to the wounds on the victims, and an eyewitness. Most likely early to late 20s. There was to rhyme or reason to who he killed. There was no pattern, or characteristic that he looked for. It seemed when the opportunity presented itself, he acted. What gave this young lady chills were the killer's methods. First, he used a knife. Not a regular knife, or even a kitchen knife, but one of those abominable, long, hunting knives used to skin a deer and other large game. According to reports, the killer rarely killed with one stab. He liked to toy with his victims, often inflicting painful flesh wounds before finishing the job. She had heard that some of the victims had died of heart attacks before the killer got around to finishing the job, perhaps that was more mercifully. Some stupid media person had dubbed the killer the deer hunter after the weapon and the movie. It seemed the killer liked to overpower victims in the dark, so that the potential victim would become agitated trying to get away. Then, just before the final stab, he would drag them into the light so that the victim could see his face. Likely this effect added to the psychological torture. That's pretty sick. Many of these details came from an assault on a woman who managed to survive her wounds. She told the police that she had enough knowledge about the legend that when she couldn't find a working light upon entering her house, it might be the deer hunter. Still, she chose to disregard her fears, instead telling herself she was silly to think this, that the power was out. When a table lamp suddenly switched on behind her, she knew he was there. She tried to run, but she was so terrified her feet became glued to the floor. All the evening news stations ran the same footage, her lying in her hospital bed, head wrapped in gauze, her eyes swollen shut. She described how she had learned if you are ever attacked by a wild animal, to let yourself go completely limp and play dead, which she did by falling to the floor after he sliced open the back of her head and stabbed her in the side. She said she went lifeless, hoping he would stop the assault, but how she managed to stay still with those wounds is beyond words.
everyone listening to her description on the news was horrifying. She said it was the worst moment of her life. The girl still lived at small rental home after graduation. She studied biology, with some vague hopes of attending veterinary school. For income, she worked as a waitress in a diner near the freeway, waiting for the fall semester. Pay was okay, tips were better. Not bad for someone at this point in their life. Several of her friends from high school were also students there, and they liked to get together and unwind. Thursday and Saturday night were their favorite gathering times. She liked to go to a rambunctious bar near the university called The Sewer. She listened to music and playing pool or football. Both were designated two-for-one drinking nights. So it was always crowded. This particular Thursday in question, she and her friends had seen the band, a rowdy, blues, rock band with all female members, who could really belt out the tunes. By the time her and her friends parted ways, she was buzzed, tired and vaguely hungry. She briefly considered stopping somewhere for a bite to eat, but then decided against it. She had to work a long shift tomorrow, and rest was the most important thing. It was close to 3 a.m. as she walked into her driveway. Lightning flickered in the north, threatening a storm. She noted all the lights were out, including the one above the outside door. She usually left that on, so she was mildly annoyed to have to stumble through the complete darkness. Her perception was just enough off to fear walking into a door jam. After fumbling with her front door key, she saw the door was unlocked. Not unusual, she forgets to lock it at least twice a week. The entryway was small and just enough to take shoes and coat off without much difficulty. She clicked the light, and nothing. No lights at all. Must be the storm. It happens she thought. Luckily she carried a light on her keychain. She decided to see what was in the fridge, and did her best not to bang around as she approached the kitchen. She noticed a curious odor, something that smelled like wet metal. Odd, but she quickly dismissed it as probably something in the sink. Or even just the smell of a lot of rain. It has rained off and on for the last six days. Thunder rumbled in the distance. The storm was getting closer. She began to feel uncomfortable, as if something in the house were off, but her slightly inebriated self said just shut up and see what kind of food we can find. She salivated as she approached the refrigerator, thinking about chewing on a piece of fried chicken from lunch, or maybe the rest of the spaghetti from work the day before. Alas her hopes were dashed when she saw that one or more of her friends must have ate both earlier while waiting for her to get ready to go out. She finished off the OJ, and headed to bed. She turned at the living room into the hall toward her room. She fantasized about nestling her head on the pillow, while curling up under her soft blanket. She would have no trouble drifting off to sleep. As she opened her door, she vaguely noted her closet door was left open, unusual. What she really noticed though was how powerful the odor of metal. It instantly reminded her of how shop class smelled in high school. Pungent, almost thick. Bam. She banged her shin on her bedside and winced. Thunder rumbled, rattling the windows. She reached for the bedside light and after fumbling momentarily, turned the switch. Still nothing happened. Her instincts were screaming at her, but the fog of alcohol barred her from recognition. She stood up from crouching over the bed, 
tired, drunk, and knowing a bruise was forming. Suddenly, a light went on behind her, from the closet. She had forgotten she had a closet light, just a single socket with a low 40 watt bulb and a pull chain. She kept it on for a night light. But wait, the clock and hall light were still off. Then recognition came crashing through the tired drunken haze. It was him. Her muscles poised to turn and run. She twisted toward the door, but it was too late. A huge, moist hand closed around her throat and pulled her back against his chest. She could smell his breath, spoiled and dank. A soft, maniacal giggle reached her ears and an inhuman voice said, Hi, do you wanna play with me? And there was no more light, just the occasional flash of the approaching storm. Hope that didn't scare you too much. Just something to think about when you're in the dark, or when the power goes out. Well, I guess I've rested enough. I have more customers to attend to. Seems business is booming. See ya around. Eventually. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!